What's up guys, my name is Chris, and today I'm talking to you guys about how to use EBSynth with motion graphics and how those things work. And to do that right now, we actually have this video clip right here. That's actually been supplied by the wonderful YouTube channel, Can You? He's actually a YouTuber that does After Effects tutorials, Illustrator tutorials, and Pokemon Go tutorials. So that being said, go check him out down below in the description after this video, and he's doing a video of how to actually make this whole scene play out. And I'm gonna have that linked together in my end cards. End cards? End screen. And I have the link together on my end screen. So that being said, let's get into this. Okay, so jumping right into this. So in After Effects, if you've done your motion graphics in After Effects, awesome, just control M and export as a PNG sequence. And we're gonna jump to our style transfer at this time right here. So if you're actually new to all this, just stick tuned. We're gonna keep through the rest of this. Stick tuned, that's a new one. From there, you're gonna drag your video into After Effects. You're gonna make a new composition and then you're gonna export as it is. You're gonna control M and export instead of lossless, you're gonna export as a PNG sequence. So you're gonna select lossless. You're gonna change it from AVI to PNG sequence. Okay, then you're gonna output to whatever you wanna name it. You have to keep those brackets and those pound signs in there and then you're gonna wanna click that save in the subfolder and change the name of that subfolder. I keep mine as whatever the composition's name is just to keep things all nice and tidy. Then we're gonna click render and we're gonna wait for that to finish. But I've already done this. And after that's all said and done, we have this. This is our output folder with all the keyframes that we have. So from there, you're gonna take your keyframes, which for us is gonna be keyframe 149 and then also keyframe number 26, if I remember right, because that's right before the city actually jumps in to, you know, frame. So with that being said, we're gonna take those, we're both gonna copy them, paste them into the main folder. So with that being said, we have keyframe 26 and 20, 129, 149 right there. What we're gonna do here is I'm actually have three different styles we're gonna be trying. We're gonna do like this Miami Vice sort of thing, a noir, and then, you know, because I absolutely love it, the Deep Dream Generators, Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night Transfer. So that being said, if you've already made your motion graphics in After Effects and you're honestly just trying to change the colors of it and you have the motion graphics file still there, go ahead and just change it in there. It's gonna make everything a lot easier and it's gonna be a lot less uh, intuitive or a lot less intensive than anything else. But for the style transfer, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jump into our Deep Dream Generator like we always do, click Generate, we're gonna drag our keyframe in there, or in this case, since I've already uploaded it, we're just gonna select it, select Deep Style, and then select whichever style transfer. Since I'm doing Starry Night, I'm just gonna keep it selected at its default, go to Settings, and change the resolution to as high as you can. For a new account, it's just gonna be normal, but from a, from a veteran account, you can do HD. I'm not a veteran account. I don't even actually have the likes needed to get to that, so I'm stuck in Medium. And then we're gonna click Generate, and wait for that to get done. All right, and from there, we're actually just gonna export that keyframe. That's gonna be our main keyframe. Now, if you want more information on how to actually select keyframes and how to resize them and all the different things with that, I have a video right up here on how to actually do it, and it's in the nice little card thing that's popping up right here. I don't wanna go into that right now because it's gonna take a little too much time, but if you wanna see more information on that, it's right up there for you guys to click on. So going from there, we're actually just gonna go straight into EBSynth now. And here are the looks I actually came up with for the Miami Vice, which is this like neon green and like, pinkish magenta orangey color just very neon miami vice sort of stuff and uh, there's the cityscape there's the noir and then there's the starry night finished products so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go into ev synth we're going to do this honestly at the end of the day these styles don't really matter of how they look it's just a matter of how ev synth functions with these i know looking back at it now since i've already done these tests and recorded this whole thing that they worked out pretty well at the time, I honestly had no idea whether they were gonna work or not. So that's one, I'm really disappointed that we lost that footage because it, I had genuine reactions and I was genuinely happy and surprised of how well they worked. I know they work pretty well now. So we're you now just gonna jump into Premiere Pro and show you guys the finished products after I export these in EBSynth to show you guys how to do that. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to open up EBSynth. And like usual, we're just gonna drag our city file first off into our videos and then we're gonna drag our keyframes in. And since our keyframes are compiled in this whole individual thing, but they're sequenced out by city two dash and then city four dash and city five dash, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to drag one keyframe over to our keys and that's gonna keep our name right there. And we don't have to do anything else for the second keyframe. We're gonna click this plus button down here and we're gonna put our keyframe name. So 26 and 149. I'm pretty sure I just butchered the explanation for that. But essentially, since they're the same name minus the numbers, we can actually just use that same path right there because it's the exact same path with different numbers, which all EVSYNTH is really looking at is the same name and the numbers. I think I really butchered that, but 
you know, it, it's gonna work at the end of the day. That's what matters here. Then we're gonna change our stops to be the end goals and the start goals, because we're just gonna put them in the same. And then we're gonna do the same outputs minus a number. And from there, you're just gonna click synth run all. And after that's done synthing, you're gonna have folders that kind of look like this. Each of them are gonna have their own little quirks to them, which I'm going to go over a little bit more once I actually jump into Premiere Pro. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna highlight all of those and you're gonna open up Premiere Pro. You're gonna drag them into Premiere Pro and drop them into your project file. And from there, go ahead and make your sequence settings like you would for any other normal sequence. So for me, I typically have it in 4K, but since these are in 1080p, I'm just keeping it in those. So keep in mind, this is what the original video file looked like. Okay, so from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select the folder that you wanna use. You're gonna select that folder, and we're just gonna drag it off to the side here. You're gonna click this little button, Automate Sequence. Like with any other EDSYNC thing, you're gonna wanna use pretty much the same settings, but the most important thing is, still clip duration, instead of use in and out range, you're gonna select frames per still, and defaults to 30, you're gonna wanna change that to one. And after you change it that first time, you don't have to change it again after that. Select OK, and it's gonna put the entirety of that folder in there as one whole, like, individual keyframe one after another. So you're gonna select them all, right click and click nest, and it's going to nest them all into one whole video file so you can cut, edit, record, do anything with that. So if we click play, this is what we have. And that's actually the mid noir one I was about to show you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and just delete that since I already have them set up here. There we go. So let's just go through these one by one. I'll explain kind of why I use different keyframes and why I use them in the way I did. Because originally it was just an experiment to see how they looked and why they looked that way. And since I'm re-recording this, it, I know why this is happening. So this first one is that first Miami Vice one. So going through, through there, at the very beginning, you see that the sun in the background looks actually a lot better than this first one right here. The second one that we're using the second one that we have here has a lot more twisted background, whereas the very first one has a lot cleaner. That's because the first keyframe that we used, which was 26, had the sun and the sky already there, but the city has no detail. In fact, if you actually watch it, this is one building in the far left is actually flickering with a chimney. Whereas this first one, or the second one, my bad, has a much worse background, but the city actually keeps its detail and there's no flickering with the chimney. And you'll notice that with a couple of these in here as we watch through the noir, with a good background, but the bad city. There's actually a lot of flickering in the far left building and the middle one even. Whereas that one had the better background, but had the way better city. Because my favorite now being the Starry Night, we have, honestly, it looks really good even with the worst city. But with a better city, the background looks so good too. Like, if there's any one of these that I think would just stand alone on their own, definitely the second Starry Night. It just looks so good as its own. It looks really freaking good, I love it. So with that, I think we can successfully say that yes, EVSynth does in fact work with motion graphics. But I wanna take this a little bit step further. How can we make those two, which had the good beginning and bad ending, and combine them with the bad beginning and good ending? Well, that's actually why we use multiple keyframes here so I can show you guys how to do that and how I would practically do it. Because before my other videos, I had no practical need to do any of that. One keyframe did everything I needed to do but with this one, I actually had to learn and go out and trigger, try and figure out how to do this. So we're gonna do, show you guys right now. So these are the finished products of what I did with them. The backgrounds in the very beginning are gonna be a little funky just because that's honestly just all new information that I didn't do anything about. I could have used three keyframes and done this even better, but I'm, I'm lazy and I didn't and I decide not to. So here's the first with Miami Vice look, which there's a pretty clean transition in there. And then from there is the Noir. And I think this just made it even better, the Starry Night. Which I just think looks absolutely amazing from there. So let's just zoom in and I'll break it down just a little bit more. So going back to the Miami Vice. In between each of these little sections, I have a cross dissolve to kind of fade them into each other. So the first Miami Vice had a really good intro, but a bad building. So from there, the main goal is trying to add the definition back to the buildings while also minimizing the background blurring and contortion. So what I did was I just cut it a little bit earlier. I think I did it. Yeah, I went a little bit further into the actual buildings coming up. And yeah, I can actually see the defining cut between them right there. 
And that was because as the buildings were coming up in the second keyframe, or in the second keyframed one, it uh, still distorted the background just a little bit more than I liked. So after I put in the default transition, which is my cross dissolve, there's a little bit of uh, lack of detail in the buildings coming up, but it slowly disappears and adds the full detail, whereas the background just kind of goes without its bad blur and completely avoids it. I think I'm butchering this explanation, but that's the only way I can really get it across here. The dissolve makes the two downsides of the different keyframes minimal while only highlighting the upsides essentially. And I just think it works really well together, especially with EB Synth here. And the Noir one actually wasn't all that bad with the transition. There was almost no recutting needed because it all, with there not being any massively defining colors, there wasn't anything to really fight through. And it just looks really freaking good. Whereas with the Vince Van Gogh one, there's a bit of a color shift. There's a brightness shift, which I think worked really well, especially with the city coming in, which you'd have lights in the city, which would light things up. And I just really loved the way that looks. I didn't, I don't have anything else to say about the Vincent Van Gogh one other than I just absolutely loved it. It just looks so nice. This is everything I love about Eevee Synth and everything I love and hope for with the software just to create amazing stuff like this and, ah, oh God, I love it all. I love everything about this, especially the, the Vincent Van Gogh effect. Like, you can change the colors of your motion graphics in After Effects and you can change all the, like, the style of the motion graphics, but you can't add a style like this very easily in After Effects, like, especially with the movement and the way it looks and everything, how it flows together and how it just bends with itself. It's just so pretty and so nice. And I love everything about Eevee Synth with this. Ah, God, I'm gushing right now, but it's so good. I love every bit of it. So yes, Eevee Synth can in fact be used with motion graphics and motion graphics excel with Eevee Synth like it should especially when you're doing a style transfer, something like the Vincent Van Gogh effects or Deep Dream Generator or anything like that crazy and that out there. Whereas with basic color corrections or basic color changes, it kind of falls apart a little bit. But honestly, at the end of the day, if you're doing it for those color schemes, the only thing I can think of that you would need it is if you don't have access to the original file, which I don't actually have the original video file because of the collaboration with Can You, he just sent me the finished video, which is exported in MP4, which is just fine and dandy for this, is actually preferred for this just because of how EVSynth functions. But if you had access to the original file, you could easily just change the coloring to be this Miami Vice looking thing or this tech noir. I say tech noir and it's really just plain noir. But yeah, EVSynth is my, my favorite in the easiest way I can see and I've actually found to give this funky style, which I love so much, the coloring and the look, it just, Oh, I'm gushing still. And that's how you use EB Synth with motion graphics. So if you guys enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button down below and click the little bell icon to get notified. If you want to see more of these videos, I have an EB Synth tutorial playlist. And right over here is the Can You video that I was telling you guys about. And he goes into great detail on how to make this nice little cityscape with the buildings and the sunset and the clouds. And he is way better than any of the stuff than I ever will be. And I've actually been following some of his tutorials on how to make some of these things. And I have to say they're amazing. So that being said, check his channel out, check his videos out, throw him some love. And that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.